Good afternoon, and thank you for joining today's webinar, AmeriCorps and Higher Education Partnering for the Public Good. It is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, someone who is a champion for the role of service in strengthening our communities and country. Barbara Stewart was unanimously confirmed in February 2018 to serve as CEO of AmeriCorps, the federal agency for national service and volunteering. AmeriCorps brings people together to tackle the country's most pressing challenges, engaging more than 270,000 members and volunteers in service across the country. Barbara, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for that kind introduction. And it is so great to see so many of you uh, on the chat and on the video and appreciate that you are joining us this afternoon for what I anticipate will be a very fun event. We have a terrific set of speakers with us this afternoon, including AmeriCorps alums, uh, representatives of colleges and universities and our AmeriCorps partners. Um, so we have a lot to cover and so let's get right to it. Uh, as this audience is well aware, Higher education is one of the most important investments that anyone can make into their future. And college or technical education prepares Americans. It pre prepares them for 21st ed education, 21st century opportunities. It prepares them for lifelong learning. It prepares them to be uh, a terrific American and it really enhances their economic opportunities as well. So it's an important foundation for uh, so many of our fellow Americans. And given uh, AmeriCorps' mission, it's no surprise that AmeriCorps is a longstanding partner with the higher edu education community. Uh, as many of you are well aware, uh, when an AmeriCorps member completes their term of service, one of the significant benefits is the receipt of the Siegel Education Award which is equivalent to the Pell Award, approximately $6,400, and can be used either for um, paying for future education or paying off student loans. So it's an important source of uh, support for individuals to complete their higher education aspirations. And we're proud that service is part of that commitment. Just a little background statistics since 1994, uh, when AmeriCorps as a federal agency was first established and our AmeriCorps grant program was first established, AmeriCorps alumni have earned more than $4 billion in education awards, in Siegel Education Awards, and more than a billion of that has been used to pay off student loans. And so truly service in AmeriCorps is making higher education more accessible and more affordable. And for that, we're very proud. We've also partnered with many uh, institutions of higher education as partners. Um, the um, uh, colleges and universities have uh, sponsored our AmeriCorps VISTA and AmeriCorps members in a number of different programs. And so our links and connections to higher education are many and varied and all extremely important. And then finally, each year, AmeriCorps members really expand access to college education for so many of their fellow Americans by providing tutoring and guidance counseling and mentoring and in many other ways. So uh, many Americans have had the opportunity to experience college or technical education because of their work with an AmeriCorps member. So to get to the meat of it, Today, I have the pleasure of announcing a new initiative. Um, AmeriCorps is announcing our Schools of National Service Partnership, an initiative, an effort to further recognize the fantastic talents, leadership skills, perseverance, and experience that AmeriCorps members bring to uh, their time on campus. And so we're very grateful. Um, to the more than 200 universities and colleges who have already committed to being a school of national service. And we are looking forward to increasing those ranks by many hundreds in the coming years. We really think there is an opportunity for many, many more schools to join us in this really important initiative. Schools of national service provide additional incentives for our AmeriCorps members and when they become alums, to attend a school of national service. And that, um, that kind of initiative can take a lot of different uh, forms, either in terms of uh, matching funds or in-state tuition or waiver of fees or other areas of support. 
We're very open to working with institutions to find what works for them. And we're really hopeful that more uh, colleges and universities will follow the lead of the, as I mentioned, 200 plus institutions that already serve as schools of national service. So um, institutions can join us by, again, providing matching uh, education awards, offering scholarships, offering in-state tuition, covering other costs, providing college credits. We're very, very open. So we are also looking forward to working with our uh, fellow stakeholders to increase awareness of this opportunity, this enhanced uh, benefit of serving with AmeriCorps. And we look forward to uh, partnering with uh, many of you on the phone to reach out to institutions of higher learning in your geographies to encourage their involvement and commitment. So I encourage all of you to take a look at our website um, where you can find additional information about this opportunity. And again, we uh, look forward to working with you and our website can help you uh, specifically uh, determine how to sign up and join our ranks. So again, excited to announce this, uh, this new initiative, our Schools of National Service, and really delighted that you uh, have chosen to join us this afternoon to learn more. So we are also joined today by a number of leaders who truly understand the importance of both AmeriCorps and higher education. And I am really delighted uh, to have some great uh, speakers to join me on our first panel. So I would now like to introduce them. Uh, Janine Davidson has served as president of Metropolitan State University of Denver since 2017. She's a national thought leader in higher education and on topics such as public service, US foreign policy, and national security. So she has a wide uh, range of expertise. As the president of Colorado's third largest public university, Janine is a fierce advocate for MSU Denver's 19,000 students. And from her first day on campus, she has championed the role public universities play in holding the line on the American dream. Prior to her time at MSU Denver, Janine served as the 32nd Undersecretary of the US Navy. Recently, she served as a presidentially appointed commissioner for the National Commission on Military, National and Public Service. She's been a great advocate for our work. So Janine, welcome. Thank you. We are also joined by Nebraska State Senator Tony Vargas, who is also a proud AmeriCorps alumni. He began his career as a public school teacher in New York City with Teach for America, an AmeriCorps program, and he's devoted his career in public service and advocacy. He was elected to serve in the Nebraska legislature in 2016, and as both a school board member and a legislator, he has been a tireless advocate for national service, for closing the achievement gap, and for addressing systematic inequalities. He recently sponsored legislation in uh, Nebraska that was enacted, signed into law, that will remove taxation on the Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award from being counted um, for Nebraska state tax. So we're very grateful for his efforts there. So Senator Vargas, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So let's start our panel off with Janine. Um, as a college president serving during COVID-19, how has the pandemic affected recruitment and enrollment and how have your enroll enrollment strategies changed? Sure, well, thank you for having me and uh, congratulations on this initiative. It's, it's super <coughs> important. Um, the pandemic has been problematic for higher education. Um, as you know, the pandemic has exacerbated a lot of the trends that we already knew were happening in, happening in America. And so um, our students are, right on in there. Uh, students at MSU Denver, uh, about over half of them are first in their family to go to college. Many of them are low income. Uh, many of them are students of color, all communities that have been hit hard by the pandemic. Um, so we really wrapped our arms around our students with uh, emergency assistance. And we did see sort of a roller coaster of enrollment. In the summer, it kind of went up, partly because I think people got um, federal aid and but also lost their jobs, um, potentially. Um, and then in the fall, it went a little bit down and we're tracking for spring. It's, it's heading uh, even further down. And I think that's a trend across the country, especially in schools like ours, which are open access. Um, and 
you know, we're surveying students, but, you know, we really don't know all the trends right now, but I think it's just a lot of COVID fatigue and a lot of uncertainty about the future. And so um, we'll be watching those really, really carefully. Thank you. Uh, it's an interesting time, certainly for all of us in a particularly <laughs> tough time to be the leader of a, a institution of higher education. So thank you for your leadership there and, and all that you're doing to uh, pivot the, the word of 2020 to, to pivot during these difficult times. Uh, Senator Vargas, how did your AmeriCorps experience influence your higher education and your public service career? So thank you very much for having me. And, um, and Barbara, that's a great question. I ask my, I actually think about it all the time. Uh, I was really fortunate to be part of AmeriCorps through, um, through Teach for America in New York City. I was a, a middle school science teacher and uh, it has heavily influenced what I do now and my entire career in education and working in higher ed and, and now in, on, on the, from the school board to the state senate, um, being in a classroom, working in a community uh, that is a higher need and where we need to have uh, every single aspect of leadership in the community, in the classroom, and, and make sure we're accessing all the different points of, of support is critical. And I realize that's not just in the classroom, that is, that's in every single facet of, of infrastructure in our public sector. And I think that is important to, um, to what Janine just shared, which is we need that in our higher education institutions. And we also, I'm excited about this initiative because um, had it not been for the service uh, that, I, that I was a part of, it has deeply influenced everything I've done since. Uh, I've worked in, with higher education institutions to make sure that we're creating opportunities for affordability, but service within higher education and making sure um, our undergraduate and graduate institutions are doing everything they can to better work within solving community problems. That's why I got into public service in the first place and why I've been doing it these last eight years. And so I'm just excited to be here because um, I think service is the one thing that can bridge um, any any divides we have in our country, and is the is the way that we can continue to build and heal heal our great country. Yeah, absolutely. It is it is the bridge builder. It, it's the opportunity. Um, when you think about all the bridges that are built when people attend college, uh, the people they meet from other parts of the country, other parts of their community, from different backgrounds, it's a it's a real bridge builder. AmeriCorps. Uh, also very much that experience, opportunity to meet different people who have different experiences in life. So thank you very much. Um, Janine, I'm curious from your experience on the National Commission, and thank you again for uh, your years of commitment on that and all the work that the Commission did to move forward uh, on a number of issues, but also to advocate for national service as an important experience for all Americans. But I'm curious why, uh, how that experience shaped your thinking about AmeriCorps and, and even more specifically, um, why do you think it's important for higher education institutions to offer financial incentives to AmeriCorps alumni? Sure, uh, you know, that experience on that commission was really profound for, for me and I think for the other commissioners, it was three years. I learned a lot about AmeriCorps. I did not have the benefit of serving in AmeriCorps. I didn't really know much about it. Um, when I was of that age. And um, so I learned a lot. I learned exactly what Senator Vargas just shared, the amazing impact it has on the individuals that are uh, that participate and how it changes their lives and how it opens their minds and how it builds bridges across different parts of the country, different parts of our mindset even, something we really need more than ever today. I agree with you, Senator, amazing. Um, also the impact it had on the communities, the programs themselves. I also learned how many things were a part of AmeriCorps that I didn't know, right? And so one of those things, one of the insights we came away with in that commission is, um, and it wasn't just AmeriCorps, but definitely in AmeriCorps, you know, there are these great opportunities to serve and it has such an amazing impact for the people who have the opportunity to serve as well as for the communities. But then so many people don't know about it. Uh -huh. And even sometimes some of the people that do know about it, they they can't really access it. So what we also learned was there was a sort of an unevenness in um, you know who has the opportunity to serve in AmeriCorps and who doesn't and um, who even knows about it. And so that became a big finding for our report. Um, and as you know, the report that we made recommendations to Congress to really um, 
improve their support, the financial support for the program, and then uh, really linking up this idea that um, people who have served in AmeriCorps should get an educational benefit that hopefully will be tax-free everywhere across America too. <laughs> um, so as a university president, that piece of it is so important to me, right? So I, I just, you know, I, I believe in the value of public service for our civil society and for individuals and for what it does for them. And I want to do everything I can as a university president um, to make that more sort of those opportunities available to as many people as possible through those kinds of incentives. But also, um, selfishly, I like having AmeriCorps people on my campus because mm -hmm. they've done such great things and they're such great role models and they're leaders. And uh, it, it spreads the word to so many other people who might not have thought about the opportunity. So I just think it has such amazing um, cascading effects when you take these AmeriCorps um, you know, participants and infuse them into and partner with higher education. It just expands the aperture across the society. And so that's one of the reasons why I, the, those are the reasons why I support our university. Thank you. Um, and I saw in the chat um, that there was a reference to the Inspire to Serve report that Commissioner and President uh, Davidson just referenced. Uh, and so if you're looking for additional information about the report, which was really quite exceptional, um, there's something in the chat that can reference you to it. Um, we at AmeriCorps took the recommendations of the commission very seriously. And the notion that it's just unfair that all Americans don't know about their opportunity to serve really struck us as extremely important. And so we have since then launched an initiative, a campaign for national service to try to expand the number of Americans who know about their opportunity to serve. We also feel like our alumni are amongst our best advocates for that. And so having AmeriCorps alumni on campus is a great way to spread the word about AmeriCorps programs, the AmeriCorps opportunity, the life-changing experience that service really is. So this partnership I think is really special. And I um, am grateful that you touched on the issue of access, um, expanding the education award, expanding the value of the education award, which is really what, um, what this, this effort uh, for um, additional schools to be engaged with AmeriCorps is, is really all about, is gonna go a long way, we believe, in it, and, and you all believe as well, to expanding the number of Americans who can access service because the education benefits just so much more significant. So a huge, huge thank you to that, to you for that. Um, Senator Marcus, I'm curious why you see that it's important to remove barriers and increase incentives. That's obviously what you were trying to accomplish with your tax legislation in Nebraska, but also in addition to why you think it's important, what other steps do you think that state governments could be taking? So there are a lot of reasons. Well, first thing I'll tell you that's important about me, I'm a first generation um, college graduate. My parents are actually originally from Peru. I'm also first generation in this country. Uh, and when I look around uh, the country and I see AmeriCorps members, they're from all different walks of life. Um, but the sacrifices uh, that they're making to then do this work uh, can often be um, substantial. And so there are barriers that exist to making this option uh, 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 an option for individuals. And, and so as Dr. Davidson mentioned, we, we need to make sure, we need to make it easier for people to serve uh, because these people are, these individuals are role models in their community. And so I saw an opportunity to make it easier for people to serve uh, in Nebraska. I didn't do this alone. I'm really lucky I had served Nebraska and, and executive director Kathleen Plager to, to, to work with me on this and the commissioners. But through this effort, we're now making it easier for more Serve Nebraska AmeriCorps members to serve in our state, to meet our local, local needs and, and issues. And there are more steps that we should be taking. Um, in addition to this, a really amazing initiative, we need to continue to, to, to make higher education more pathways for people to serve in higher education. In-state tuition for AmeriCorps members is something we've seen you know, in, in many states put into law and legislation so that you know, state, you know, publicly funded state universities are providing an incentive for individual uh, AmeriCorps alum to stay and, and, and be role models in their community. And, and so this is an important thing. It's personal to me, not only because of my own AmeriCorps story and, 
me continuing giving back. It's all, AmeriCorps is special to me. I also met my wife through AmeriCorps and, and, and service continues on in our household and in, in our community. And so I'm gonna do everything I can to remove more barriers in Nebraska and encourage more of my uh, state senator colleagues across the country to do the same. So we can have more, uh, more of these great experiences and what Dr. Davidson's mentioning at, you know, at your university, because if, uh, if we can do that, we're only furthering the amazing capability, leadership capabilities of our, of our individuals serving in our country. Tony and Janine, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this afternoon and speaking so eloquently about the importance of national service, the importance of this partnership, shining a light on the importance of um, higher education as a partner and the importance of ensuring access. So we're really grateful to both of you. You are both terrific champions of national service and uh, walking the walk and talking the talk. So very grateful for your participation. And um, it was a pleasure to speak with both of you. Great to see you both. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Barbara. So now, um, I have the honor of introducing uh, Paul Glastris, who's gonna be moderating our next panel discussion, which I think you're gonna thoroughly enjoy. So a little bit about Paul. He is the editor in chief of the Washington Monthly, a position he's held since April, 2001. And he's also the co-author of the book, The Other College Guide, and was previously a special assistant and senior speechwriter to President Bill Clinton. Before joining the White House, Paul spent 10 years as a correspondent and editor at US News and World Report. And he's also written for the New York Times, the Washington Post, and is a regular commentator on the BBC and a guest commentator on CNN, MSNBC, NPR, and other programs. Probably once you have the chance to see Paul on this video, you'll recognize him and um, say the next time you see him on one of those broadcasts, hey, I, I saw that guy moderate a panel. So anyway, Paul, it is just great to have you with us. And so I'm gonna turn the virtual mic over to you to lead a really terrific panel. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Barbara. I uh, really appreciate it. Enjoyed uh, both, uh, both the speakers. We've got two other terrific speakers on the panel today. Um, and uh, 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 let me just say that, that, uh, that the Washington Monthly has a longstanding interest in this project in AmeriCorps, in national service. Um, uh, and uh, for decades, a, a college or a university was considered good if it was exclusive, wealthy, and prestigious. But under political and market pressures, that definition is beginning to shift um, to schools that do good uh, by providing quality degrees at reasonable prices to non-wealthy students while encouraging those students to become good citizens, active citizens. Um, since 1990, since 2005, the Washington Monthly has published a annual alternative college guide and ranking um, that, uh, that looks at the contributions to the public good uh, of universities and colleges in three broad categories, um, mobi uh, upward mobility, research, and providing opportunities for national and public service. One criteria we use in the service category is whether an institution provides financial or uh, incentives to AmeriCorps alum. Uh, so this discussion is right on target for us. Um, so let me just introduce very briefly the uh, speakers uh, on the next panel. Jennifer King Rice is Dean of the University of Maryland College of Education and is a professor of education policy. The College of Education provides research and practice-oriented programs to pre prepare students to be educators, counselors, psychologists, um, uh, uh, administrators, researchers, and uh, educational specialists. Uh, also, uh, uh, Bethany Godso is Interim Senior Associate Vice President of Student Affairs uh, at New York University. She provides strategic leadership and oversight for the Center for Student Life, NYU Leadership Initiative, Student Affairs Research and Assessment, 
and the Wasserman Center for Career Development. Uh, finally, we have Yasi Davuti, uh, who served as a City Year AmeriCorps member in 2006, 2007, and then did a second year after college in 2011, 2012. Uh, she currently is regional director of uh, New York for You Aspire, a nonprofit organization that helps young people have the financial information and resources necessary for an affordable path to and through college. So Jennifer, let me start with you. Um, this is a tough time for higher education uh, with COVID, budget pressures, uh, uh, concerns about enrollment. Yet the University of Maryland College of Education recently signed on as a school of national service, offering matching funds for AmeriCorps alumni. So not to put too fine a point on it, but why did you do it? And how does, how does this affect your, your bottom line? So um, let me just start by saying how pleased I am to be part of this panel today and to share how excited that we are uh, at the University of Maryland College of Education to be an AmeriCorps School of National Service. Paul, you raise, a, I think, a really important point. These are challenging times, to be sure. Uh, there is no question about it. And the challenges are have reached every facet, I think, of higher education. But you know, when this opportunity came along and, and I, you know, I understood what the schools of national service are all about, it struck me that this partnership is a win-win-win. Um, that even though we have limited resources, we need to use them wisely and um, targeting them to this particular program and students who are AmeriCorps alums um, is going to help us all. So I see it as a win for the University of Maryland College of Education. I see it as a win for our students, current and perspective. And I see it as, as a win for schools and communities and society at large. And I wanna say just a, a, a tiny bit about each of those. You know, as far as our University of Maryland College of Education goes, this program so deeply reflects the values and commitments that we in the College of Education at a public land grant flagship institution hold. You know, we're committed uh, to equity and social justice, uh, to civic engagement, uh, community partnerships, and we're committed to preparing an educator workforce that's diverse and that's civic minded and that's creative and innovative and prepared to meet the needs of diverse learners and to address some of the grand challenges in education today. So as a newcomer to this partnership, I'm really hopeful that, this, that our status as a school of national service will help us attract exactly those kinds of students that we want. So it's helping us align our resources with our own mission. Um, I also see it as a win for our students. It expands access to our programs, particularly again, for the students that we're looking to attract and enroll. It reduces cost and debt. And we know that affordability is absolutely critical for educators and for other public service fields that are often lower paid than other professions. And finally, it's also a win for schools and communities and society at large. At our College of Education, we recognize the importance of attracting smart, capable, civically minded community leaders into education. These are the future professionals that are gonna shape the next generation of global citizens to participate in our democratic, social, and civic institutions. So really, as I see it, nothing is more important. And this partnership is helping us advance that mission as a college of education at the University of Maryland. Thanks, that's, 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 uh, that's really helpful. Um, Bethany, uh, Jennifer's institution has only just started uh, this a matching grant uh, with AmeriCorps. Uh, Four of NYU's graduate schools have been offering matching scholarship funds for AmeriCorps for quite some time. Um, why, again, why does NYU do that? And how you have a better sense over time of what the benefits to the university are. I'd love to hear about that. Sure, well, I also want to say thank you for including me and including New York University in this conversation uh, and thank AmeriCorps for their incredible leadership on what's just such an important issue at uh, always in this country, but particularly at this moment in time. Um, so, I mean, uh, Dean Rice, 
I think you're going to be thrilled uh, as you move forward uh, in this way. Um, so much of the things that you said you are anticipating and hope for uh, are those benefits that have accrued to the students and um, the institution uh, at, at NYU. So at NYU, we have a motto that we are a private institution in the public service. Uh, so public service is truly part and parcel of our educational mission and part of our research mission uh, as well. And so this um, uh, commitment has been a way for us to attract truly outstanding students to uh, four of our graduate schools, as you mentioned, the Wagner Graduate School of Public Service, Silver, Silver School of Social Work, Steinhardt School of Education, Human Development, Culture, um, and the School of Professional Studies as well. Um, and, you know, I do have so, quite some up close sort of personal experience with some of these students because I spent uh, quite a bit of time as an assistant dean for enrollment and student services at the Wagner School. And not only did I admit uh, many of these students uh, uh, while I oversaw admissions there, um, but also hired them as graduate assistants um, because they really stood out as students who had hands-on experience working in communities. So when they came to Wagner, they already knew up close what the issues were. They weren't just in their heads thinking about how to you know, address policy issues, for example, or think about uh, nonprofit management, they really understood from the ground up what was going on and what the issues were. They also had a bit clearer sense of where they wanted to head with their own careers um, because they had spent that time um, getting, getting the experience. Um, so since we started this program, NYU has received over $9.5 million in Siegel payments um, and enrolled at least, at minimum, it's over 2,500 alumni. I think that's quite an undercount, actually, but that's the, the numbers that AmeriCorps has for us at this point. Um, but more importantly, I really want to emphasize that it's the energy, the enthusiasm, the values uh, and the experience that the students bring to the classroom that really enriches the learning environment for everyone involved. Um, that is the, the true contribution, I think, of being in partnership in this way with AmeriCorps. Thank you, Bethany. That, that, that answers the question, uh, although I might come back to you with some specifics. Um, I want to turn to Yasi. Uh, uh, you served as a city year AmeriCorps member twice. Tell us about your service, how it influenced your higher education goals, uh, your career path, helping other students get access to higher education and, and you know, sort of what you're learning now that you are imparting some of this knowledge uh, in your current job. What are you learning about the, about the young people, presumably it's mostly young people who are trying to make this, uh, uh, transition from service to, to higher education. Yeah, um, this is incredible to be a part of and just to hear both Dean Rice, uh, just both of you talk about um, sort of the AmeriCorps experience on a macro level and what you're seeing and having it resonate so um, closely with my own lived experience. So I, to echo, thank you so much for inviting me. I am incredibly humbled today to be able to share my experience as an AmeriCorps member. Um, just a little bit about a like background. Um, as a first generation Iranian American, uh, I always had college aspirations, um, but unfortunately had very little guidance and even fewer funds to make that a reality. Um, and frankly, really struggled academically. So uh, that didn't really help in creating many college opportunities or access to financial aid when I was applying to school. Um, and then ultimately, my, my senior year, my mom had to sit me down and sort of tell me that I couldn't attend the one university I'd been accepted to because we couldn't afford it. Um, and which of course was very difficult to hear at the time, but I now in hindsight would not have changed it for the world um, because of course it was that reality that led me to explore AmeriCorps opportunities and ultimately land me at City Year. Um, 
so I moved here to New York City right before my 18th birthday, which now kind of like, you know, thinking about it is uh, just wild to think. Um, and that year really changed my life and changed my trajectory. Um, I worked at an elementary school here in Brooklyn, um, which really exposed me to seeing the world outside of myself for the first time and understanding my privilege um, and my access to education. Um, and just lit a fire and a passion in me that just simply hadn't existed before. Um, so during my core year, I reapplied to college um, sort of with what you both were speaking to, with a direction, with the life experience and a newfound drive and purpose. Um, much of what I experienced my core year was really difficult for me. I was I was unable to process at the time and really just kind of had very visceral reactions to. Um, and so I ended up double majoring in sociology and Africana studies and used my time in college to really better understand and like have a vocabulary and framework around the educational, economic and racial inequities that I saw my students experiencing. Um, you know, looking back, I think had I had the opportunity uh, to increase the power of my Siegel Award, and if that had been available to me at the time, it likely would have influenced my college decision um, and maybe would have helped make some of my monthly student loan payments a little less painful currently. <laughs> but um, I absolutely love my alma mater and, and appreciate my time there, but I would have loved to have this option to explore. Um, I used my Siegel Award to, to pay for my first semester of college, um, and it was tremendously helpful. Um, and so then as I was getting ready to graduate for co from college, I this is not a unique narrative. I wasn't really certain of what I wanted to do in my career, so looked back to City Year. Um, thinking that, you know, that experience had really been a launching pad for my college career and wondering if it could be the same for my professional career. Um, Fortunately, did not disappoint. And uh, when I returned back to City or New York, I um, was able to lead a team of core members at a middle school in Long Island City, Queens. Um, my experience in working with a middle school, I think, is ultimately what led me to college access and to college success in working with uh, older students. Um, and so I worked for a number of years as a college counselor where uh, I was working with predominantly first generation low income students of color. And that's where I really started to see the theme of affordability play a prominent role in my students ability to access and succeed in a post secondary education. Um, was very fortunate to then be using my Siegel Award to be paying off said student loans and so have it on kind of both ends. Um, and then now in my role as the regional director for you Aspire for New York site, um, I have the privilege of leading our team in supporting students and families and accessing the dwindling affordable college op options and navigating the unnecessarily complex and complicated financial aid system. Um, so feel really incredibly fortunate to be able to use my personal and prof professional experience to help students access higher education. And frankly, just don't think that I would be here without my time as an AmeriCorps member with City Year um, and just uh, feel so indebted and grateful for that experience. Well, thank you. Uh, so many questions I want to ask uh, all of you and we have limited time so so I'll just get I'll just get right at it um I guess my my first question and I'll 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 ask uh, I'll ask Jennifer um you, you know how can we get more colleges and more schools within colleges to sign up for this matching benefit. It just is so obviously a good thing for the, your institutions, a good thing for the country. You get people like Yasi coming to your college. Um, it, it, as, as you said, it's a win, win, win. And uh, in your estimation, do people at the university th that you work at even know such a thing exists? And what is it gonna take to get them on board? Sure, thanks, thanks for that question. Um, and it's a really good question. It seems like a really obvious one too, um, because you know, if, if there are, if it is just a win-win-win situation, why, why isn't everybody jumping, jumping in? And I think that um, you know, one, one reason, probably the predominant reason is about information, is sharing 
what this program is about. I think this launch is, a, is an excellent uh, you know, event to, to do that, to spread the word, but I think we need to do a much better job of spreading the word um, and reflecting that you know, the, we are investing in scholarships anyway. The question is, how do we align our investments? And you know, we have limited money. We need to make decisions about where, where those dollars go. How do we align those investments with our values and our priorities? And I think, again, you know, speaking from my own perspective at a public land grant flagship institution, our priority as an institution is to serve. And so, you know, sharing that information with the other deans, and we have a, a, a new, I think, very civically minded president, uh, President Daryl Pines, um, to persuade them really involves sharing the information and helping them understand um, that this is an excellent investment because it supports the goals of the institution. Great. I want to ask Bethany a similar question, but a, a little bit broader. Um, what would what would it take uh, in terms of public policy from Congress, uh, uh, from the state of New York maybe, to uh, make it easier for the university where you work to uh, do what Jennifer was saying, to, to get more of the school engaged, maybe the entirety of the university offering these matching grants? I don't know, that's, that's a curveball of a question. You might not have the answer. I'm just, as a policy journalist, curious if you have any insight. Yeah, it's a big question too. Um, I mean, I, I think some of what Senator Vargas has been doing in Nevada is really exciting and promising. And uh, I would love to explore uh, the extent to which uh, the kinds of solutions he's advancing there could also work uh, in New York State. Um, but I also want to, um, I want to uh, bring up an earlier point about young people not knowing that AmeriCorps service is even something that they could pursue. So. I would love to see a way that we could uh, encourage more partnerships between our institutions of higher education and, um, and secondary schools to ensure that you know, kids in high school, maybe even further upstream, are hearing about the value of service. And so while that's not so much a, a national policy, that can be state and local uh, policy um, that could help to inform um, uh, service you know, in the social studies curriculum, for example, which opens the door then to, to young people thinking, oh, how could I get more of this experience, right? Um, I've never known anyone who did service and then said, no more, thank you, I'm done. It is something that once you catch the bug, once you have the experience, it becomes a way of life and a part of you know, just who you are in the world. So I think that looking you know, even younger in our education systems, exposing young people to service, and there that opens the door to us doing a better job of letting them know about the AmeriCorps possibility. And if higher education then can come in and say, hey, and you know, you can go and do that and then come to us and it's gonna increase the affordability of the degree. It's going to help you make more of your time in education because you're going to be more self-directed. You'll have developed some of those uh, what I like to call success skills. Some people call them soft skills, but they're really the most important ones employers tell us now, right? That are gonna help with career in terms of intercultural competencies and teamwork and knowing yourself, right? All of that is going to really advance them on their way. So I think it's a, you know, AmeriCorps, maybe there's some policy role, um, but there's also a partnership between sort of um, the public school system and higher education, both public and private, to really make that happen. I think that's absolutely right. Making sure that service is not seen as um, the alternative to higher education as much as it is a pathway to higher education. 
education. And I think the two have been sort of pitted against each other, or at least in my experience. Um, I, sort of the pushback that I got when I decided to take a gap year of, you know, well, are you ever going to go back to school? This is really going to kind of delay your motivation when the the exact opposite was the reality. You know, uh, one of the point. commenters uh, on the chat was, it did an AmeriCorps year after high school and was saying she was sort of seen as the black sheep because she didn't go directly to college, right? Get off that track and mom and dad are like, oh my God, I'm so worried about you. And uh, there's an entire chapter in, the, in, in my book, uh, The Other College Guide, walking students through service options and trying to make the point, there's money at the end of the line. You get a GI Bill type thing, you get a Siegel Award. I don't, uh, Yasi, do, how many students that you've dealt with even know such a bonus exists? Um, I think our our programs are working really hard to, to establish more um, post-secondary pathways and not just defining college right after graduation as the, the successful pathway. Um, and so, but I think that it's a combination of both the access to the information and the stigma around taking time off. And I, so I think it really it does require a mindset shift. Um, a lot of, speaking from my own experience, first generation students, um, if you're not going directly to college, there is a bit of this mindset that um, not necessarily that you're just deviating from the path, but that you have somehow failed that path. And so I think that, um, it really does require a larger conversation shift to, to make sure that students see that as an acceptable and promoted pathway um, and not an alternative pathway, um, but really just, um, like I said before, like another avenue to higher education that could ultimately result in it being more affordable. Right. Right. Let me just switch a little bit and ask Bethany and Jennifer, we don't have a ton of time, so I'm just going to ask both of you sort of the same question. Um, to what extent does, does the AmeriCorps involvement, the recruiting of AmeriCorps students fit in to your strategies to advance social justice, uh, to, a, to uh, make the pathway between graduating with a degree from your institution and, you know, remunerative and meaningful employment happen. So, so it, 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 it seems like one of the themes that's coming out here is AmeriCorps members have more direction. They kind of know what they want to do. They have these skills. Um, how does it fit into to in both your institutions to your? Uh, strategies for social justice and career. So I'll jump in. So, you know, I think it is it, central to our strategy. Uh, you know, it's, it's not the only thing that we're doing, but it fits, you know, hand in glove with some of our efforts. We're very clear that social justice is part of our value structure. Uh, it's a lot of what we do in the College of Education. I, and I will say, you know, um, Paul, the, I think when you were saying, how do we get universities to do more of this? I, I do want to raise your alternative ranking system as a really important part of that. I think to the extent that we don't think of this as an alternative to higher education, um, as Yasi was saying, but rather it's integrated into what it is that we do. It's core to our mission to do good and to help develop our students and you know, the next generation of global citizens to, to do good, to contribute to society, not just through their professions, but through what it is they, that they do through public service. And so these alternative rankings to the, to the status quo, I think are really important in changing the mindset of university leaders, of, uh, of college and school deans and, and so forth. So integrating this into our mission. And, that, and that's, I think that that notion of integration of public service into, into what it is that we do um, answers your, your second question, I think very directly, that this is simply, these are the students that we want to have at the table. They're the students that we want to be the next generation of educators in Maryland schools and schools throughout the country. Uh, so, um, so I think that, you know, as, as I said at the very beginning, you know, this program very much helps us advance that social justice, diversity, equity, inclusion mission of our college. Bethany, same question to you. 
So I, I agree. And um, just to build on with a little bit more focus on the career side, since I, I do work in that area as well, um, you know, it, it's not just about getting students who are going to continue on the path of public service, but who are going to bring that ethic of public service and that value system into other areas as well. So to your point, Paul, about you know, getting other schools on board, um, I think it's important that you know, we try to work with our colleagues to expand beyond um, sort of the obvious areas of you know, public service and social work and education and, and into business and law and other areas as well. Um, but you know, I will say one of the great things that Teach for America did was to help young people who wanted to go into public service but didn't understand what it meant to, to do that, to take the first step. They mimicked the corporate recruiting model and so it became much clearer for people. Like this is, if you wanna go into policy, if you wanna go into a career that's gonna help you create change on the issues you care about in communities, here's a first step. And here's an application process you can go through that's gonna look just like it did for you going through you know, your college applications or your friends who are going through recruiting in corporate America. Um, one of the biggest barriers I see for young people really pursuing careers in public service is that they don't understand how to forge the path. It's just in time hiring, it's a zigzag kind of path through and up. Um, and so that is a real um, contribution of Teach for America and other AmeriCorps opportunities is that it helps to show that first step. So not only do I like to recruit AmeriCorps students in the door, I also like to sort of promote uh, AmeriCorps opportunities as a first step, particularly uh, for our undergraduates when they're thinking about where they're going to go next. Yeah, I, you know, I worked for President Clinton, who, as we know, started AmeriCorps and also, you know, created the first uh, income based repayment system and the whole idea behind it was to create a pathways for people to serve uh, and worry less about uh, their college costs, their college debt. Of course, things have gotten outrageously expensive since then, um, but it's still the right, I think, idea to, to animate this. And, and it's just great that AmeriCorps is reaching out to more colleges uh, to, to convince them to get on board because the, the match increases uh, the affordability. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Yasi, the, give us, you, you mentioned some examples of individual students. Um, and I'm just curious, is there a student that in any of your recent years who really you know, illustrates what we've been talking about here today. I, I don't wanna, again, I'd throw you a curveball, but if there is such a person, uh, would love to hear the, the, that example. Um, I think students who I've worked with um, don't pop into my mind as much as the uh, um, high school graduate core members who I had on my team my, my second core year um, who had decided to take time off before applying to school. Um, three of them just had such vastly different experiences in high school and what brought them to city year. Um, and watching and being able to sort of like help shape and mentor like the way they could think about and reflect on their core year and how that then informed what they did after uh, AmeriCorps. Um, I just feel tremendously privileged to have been, been a part of their journey and to sort of um, pa pass that learning along to them. And now um, it just, they come to mind right now because one just graduated um, from grad school with her this week or last week rather with her master's in public administration. One is currently um, attending CUNY's graduate school of journalism and just to see what they've done since since their second core year is just 
Um, That's very cool. To see what little direction they had when they came in to now what full lives and careers they, they've had since is just. Um, that, that's great. Love being in their corner. That's great. Uh, we could talk all day. Uh, this was fascinating. Um, hope we can talk offline, but I want to wrap it up and hand it over to Barbara, who has, uh, we're all very grateful uh, to you, Barbara, for your leadership at AmeriCorps. And uh, uh, thanks for having us all on. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Paul, thank you so much for leading that really interesting panel. And Jennifer and Bethany, thank you for your uh, new partnership and your continued Good afternoon, this is Sherry chiming in. It appears Barbara has gone on mute, so give us just a moment to get her unmuted. And asking our contractors if you can please prompt Barbara to unmute. Barbara, can you hear us? All right, it appears that we are having some technical difficulties. So while we wait to reconnect Barbara, I will just continue her thought and say thank you all so much for joining today, particularly to our speakers on the last panel. Um, you've told a really compelling story about the role that AmeriCorps members have in higher education. And it was really wonderful to learn more from all of you. Um, thank you everyone who has joined, especially for the active chat and q and It was such a pleasure talking with so many of you about how national service programs in higher education can support each other in advancing the public good. Uh, we're really excited for AmeriCorps to build on our history of partnering with higher education to continue making college more affordable and accessible for thousands of Americans. So we encourage everyone to visit our website to learn more about AmeriCorps and schools of national service. And just checking one more time, Barbara, are you back? Oh my goodness. Can you see me or hear me? We can. And we can see you and hear you. Go ahead, Barbara. I think you were just going to switch into a charge of action at the end. I was. And let me just quickly echo Sherry's thanks and apologize for my technical difficulties. It was so great to have uh, Paul leading that panel and our three speakers were just amazing. So again, thank you. I realize we're tight on time. So big picture, I just want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. And I would encourage all of you to visit our website, nationalservice.gov slash schools to uh, learn more. If you are an AmeriCorps alum, please encourage your alma mater to become a school of national service. If you are a partner or a commission member, um, if you're representing a commissioner or any of our grantees, please think about ways that you can encourage schools in your area to participate in this program and really expand the benefit of uh, service with AmeriCorps. And if you are representing a technical school or college or university, please, please consider joining us as the School of National Service. You will be thrilled with the quality of the AmeriCorps members who join you as students on your campus. It will be uh, a decision you will not regret. I loved hearing Dean Rice say that we need to do a better job of spreading the word about AmeriCorps. I can't agree more. I think our Schools of National Service initiative both strengthens the uh, the benefit of participating uh, in the program. It strengthens the financial benefits of being an AmeriCorps member, member. And in so doing, it strengthens our ecosystem of service, the service that's provided in communities, the bridges that are built through service. So grateful to be with all of you. Enjoy the holiday season. Thank you for joining us. And again, don't hesitate to go to nationalservice.gov backslash schools to learn more about national service and our Schools of Service initiative and join our ranks. Great to be with you all. Happy holidays.